sandwich, oh, is it a sandwich? If I called a hot dog a sandwich, do you think that you would be fine with it? If not, then why? Let's bust this wide. Mary, Carrie, Kelly, oh my, is it a sandwich? Well, let's Hi there, hello, I'm Matt Ardill, your producer for this episode, and while I find a way out of this sticky situation involving myself, my cat, and a bottle of table syrup, I'll just say it's time for Order Up. (laughs) Oh no, I don't want to know what's happening at your house, Matt. (laughs) (laughs) That's a sticky situation, for sure, anytime maple syrup and and an that's going to go down a weird road. I'm just going to stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I am one of your co-hosts and producers and your friend, Kelly Zemnikas. You are listening to Order Up. I've got my pals here, Mary, Carrie, and Matt. Uh, Mary, what is? have you ever spilled maple syrup over something before? Have you ever done that? Well, you know with me, <laughs> Kelly, there's always an interesting story. <laughs> I like to eat maple syrup but i can't touch it what do you, i don't what? like the feeling on my hands i don't i it, i cannot have anything sticky on my hand it's a sensory thing <laughs> i was born with it but i can't have anything sticky on my hand cotton candy maple syrup soda or pop or tonic or i don't know i'm out where i'm in canada too but I can't, nothing sticky on my hands. And the worst thing for me is if I go to like get my hands done and I get a paraffin wax, yeah. I can't have the paraffin on my hands. I can on my feet, but I cannot on my hands. You are a complicated, complex woman, Mary Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it might be a fear. I don't know, but I just know. And my mother had it. My wow. brother has it, so wow. it might be hereditary. Huh. So, mm. And my son has it. So fascinating. Isn't All it? right. Well, Carrie and Matt, uh, when if we're ever invited over to your home, we'll be very tidy. We will very, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Won't be spilling syrup anywhere. <laughs> what about you, Carrie? Do the kids are the kids messy breakfast eaters or very? Well, my daughter is uh, not so messy. She's pretty good and she can make her own food and whatever. My son is a little <laughs> messier. He still <laughs> likes to eat with his hands, even though he's older. He's 10, but he still prefers the text and he tends to shred things. He'll eat toast. And then it's like a tsunami of crumbs underneath. <laughs> so it's, it's, if we had a dog, it would be a happy, happy dog because of the, all the crumbs. <laughs> Sadly, we do not. <laughs> I'll send my dog over to your home. <laughs> I'll send her over. <laughs> yeah, I kind of eat like your son does. I have to say, like when when I'm uh, consuming a meal, I'm the one with the most napkins. I, <laughs> there's so many. My nickname should be Wet Nap for how much <laughs> Wet Nap. Wet Nap Zemnikis next to the stage. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Oh my God. I like it too. But uh, speaking of uh, food and, you know, as we start, friends, we start off the show with some fun food facts. Uh, Matt Ardill, for episode five, what do you have uh, for us in the breakfast category genre? Of the well, with both of our food items, maple syrup is a big part of eating them. And we, you know, three of us are Canadians. Uh, Maple syrup is a huge part of the Canadian identity. So much so many of us just have always thought of it as being around. And a lot of us don't really know its history and kind of take it for granted as some delicious treat that was just part of Canada. Uh, The reality is it was first discovered by the Algonquin people and they called it (laughs) Sinsa Buckwood or drawn from the wood as it was shared, uh, or sorry, drawn from the wood. And it was shared with Europeans in the early 16th century who began industrializing the manufacture of syrup. Um, now, since then, Canada has made it an indelible part of our history and our economy. 
75% of the world's syrup is produced in Canada, with 89% coming from Quebec, 7% from New Brunswick, 4% from Ontario, and 1% from Nova Scotia. Uh, it is such a guarded commodity. We have our own syrup Fort Knox. <laughs> Where, where Canada keeps its national maple syrup reserve. It's a stock of maple syrup we're able to use to con- basically control the market. You know, if there's ever a dip in production, we can keep it, keep production stable. Now, there was a syrup heist that ran from 2011 to 2012. And you may think, a year for a heist? That's a long time. But it is syrup, and it's very sticky. Uh, now, <laughs> what the syrup bandits did is they r- ran a hose through the wall and slowly drained these metal tubs what? of syrup and then filled them with water. And they stole 3,000 long tons or 3,300 short tons of maple syrup valued at 18.7 million Canadian dollars. Uh, And they were only caught when they tried to unload it on the syrup black market because there is no such thing as a syrup black market. Uh, They're they're, like the cops immediately found them when they tried to sell it. But yeah, the RCMP were involved. This is a huge thing. But nobody talks about it because it's so weird. Um, Now, given how much money it costs for maple syrup, it's only appropriate that we have this next fact. Um, So my my last little bit of trivia here is the most expensive pancakes are made by the Radisson Blue Edwardian Hotel, a five-star Opus restaurant. Their pancakes include the ingredients pink champagne, lobster, truffles yeah. and caviar costing $1,166 per serving. And if you don't mind my editorializing here, um, that sounds entirely gross. I am yeah. sorry, but what is wrong <laughs> with a normal flapjack? I do not want fish eggs. That's gross. On my grill cakes. No. I am good. Thank That's you. Yes. Yeah, so those are our, our, our trivia for the day. That is wild. That is, Mary, Mary's got questions. I, I well, I'm speaking for America. So what? <laughs> so what percentage of the syrup is Vermont? Um, Ooh. let me check. Uh, uh, I know it's. I think it's up there. Yeah, Matt is asking our, our research team. Uh, our research team, uh, we mean Google. Um, but I have to say, now listen. I will eat syrup. I don't handle syrup. I will eat syrup. I will have to say that a Vermont syrup, and don't hate me, America, is not as hearty as the Canadian syrup. Yeah, so it's about one-tenth of production. There's 12,000 taps in Canada. There's 1,000, oh no, sorry, 3,451 taps produce 1,221 gallons a year. Um, So compared to, yeah, Canada, yeah, it's... It's a fraction of of our production. So probably it's the next biggest producer, though. So, yeah, it's so it's up there. There we go. A fun fact about uh, Vermont syrup. Uh, My my lovely boyfriend who works uh, for the he works for some TV channels, uh, one of which uh, is CNN. Uh, He was gifted a bottle of syrup uh, by a CNN morning anchor who I won't name, but Anytime I'm there, I just ask for the CNN syrup. But I know it's <laughs> so there we go. There okay. we go, friends. Those are some uh, those are some hearty breakfast facts to get us into what is episode five of season three of Order Up. And Carrie, yes, who is our guest today. So this is very exciting because I'm going to introduce our guest, but. I had to really whittle down some of her accomplishments. Like if I was going to talk about this person's accomplishments and things that she's done, I would be here for a long, long time. So this is a very small (laughs) snippet of this talented person. So our guest today is an Anishinaabe Algonquin filmmaker, curator, and writer from the Kabawawek First Nation. Her documentary film, The Edible Indian, has met critical acclaim in classrooms and theaters internationally. 
It was nominated for Best Documentary Short at the American Indian Film Festival. She's a passionate arts activist within Indigenous communities and has worked as a film mentor across Canada. One of her most recent projects had her co-directing with our very own Kelly Zimnickis. Uh, They soon to be released short documentary, which is called Janelle Niles, Inconvenient. We would like to welcome Cass Gardner. Thank you. What an, what an intro. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We'll we'll package it up so you can play it for when you enter a room. <laughs> oh yes, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also here. And uh yeah, I'm so excited for folks to see our film about Janelle Niles, who has been a guest on Order Up. Mm-hmm. Uh she was in a season one where we asked her the hard hitting question of is a hamburger, a sandwich. And I believe she said no. So, <laughs> Oh, wow. I would agree, though. I'm going to stand with my First Nations cousin there on that one. <laughs> Good. As you should. As you should. So uh, all those amazing accolades aside, Cass, we're going to put them on the shelf for the moment and just dive into some very, uh, very hard-hitting food questions for you uh, today on Order Up. Uh, so let's get started. Let's get started. Uh, we're going to start off with question number one, as you do. Um, what is your favorite comfort food? Okay, so I have a few, but the top ones I would say is macaroni and cheese, the <gasps> classic, um, in all of its permutations. Like, I especially like when it has pimento cheese in it. That Ooh, one is a really good one. That's interesting. Uh, and like some pickled green tomatoes, like kind Ooh. of like a Southern take on that. That's really Ooh. good. Um, but then I also have been known to like dip into a fluffernutter sandwich. Oh. Really <sighs> nice. good. On toast nice. though. It has to be like slightly warm. Mm. Awesome. So it gets all melty. I mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so it's. Exactly. No. It, the toast is just the vehicle, really, for the marshmallow fluff and the peanut butter, and it it it's irrelevant in my in my palate. <laughs> now, have you tried doing cinnamon toast with fluffernutter? Oh, um, I have because another one is like just the classic, like a butter sandwich with the cinnamon and the sugar. Oh my god! So it's like crunchy, yeah. you know, like so you get the crunch from the sugar crystals, but then you have like the cinnamon, and then you have like the butter. Oh, I was um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm a snacker. I have a lot of snacks. I could go right. on, but I think those are like the, the ones I return to every month. Uh, mm-hmm. at a certain time so I feel like those are, now are <laughs> those are good for me <laughs> that's awesome I also think Fluffernutter would be a good nickname <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think so I think so or a coat my coat my my security clearance if I was a spy I feel like it would be oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question number two um what is a food habit that your partner has that drives you nuts um, I had to think about this one for a while, actually, because very sweetly, there aren't that many um, because we're both very big foodies and we travel a lot and eat a lot. But I ha- when I really thought about it, the thing that kind of makes me a little crazy <laughs> is that um, when he eats chips and when he's done eating the chips, he will leave the crumbs and then like close it up and put it back in the pantry. So it's just oh, the bottom crumbs. That's no good. And I understand because in his defense, he's like, that's the best part. And he likes to eat it. But then I'm like, but then when you're when you're eating it and you realize it's gotten to that point of the bag, like just eat it and then throw it away or throw it away. Yeah. But putting it back in the pantry <laughs> is like a red herring for me <laughs> that is a full bag of the thing that I would then want. And then I open it and it's like, yeah, just like the dust in the bottom. Oh. So. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That one is bad. That does, does he bad. put things back that he's finished? It's just and chips. It's just, just chips. chips. Yeah. Yes. Like it's not like the refrigerator where it's like, there's just like a little bit of mayo left, but like the whole container is <laughs> in there or something. Or like there's, you know, it's not like that bad. It's just for some, it's so, just with chips. So he's a chip tease. Yeah. 
That's how I would do it. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, I would say that's correct. (laughs) (laughs) Question number three. Uh, What was the first thing you learned how to cook? I don't remember what the first thing I learned how to cook was. I remember the first thing that I baked was brownies. Mm, Yum. Which could also be a strong contender for also number one comfort food, I would say. (laughs) Also, like a fudgy brownie. Mm. Um, But that was like a a real like sleepover, like first kind of thing you do when you're like, you know, like eight or nine and you're mixing the mix. Like I I think Mm -hmm. it was the the Giardelli ones that we would oh, get. Oh, those are the best. Those are, yeah. they're really good. Cause the, it's like more cocoa than like the chocolate, you know? And it's like, they're fudgier. Mm. Um, I remember very vividly doing that, but for, f- I don't know, for food, I have to say it was probably something like super basic, like, um, like mashed potatoes. I feel like, like, you know, helping, and your mm-hmm. mom with like dinner and they're like, just make these mashed potatoes or like, <laughs> steaming broccoli. I don't know. Something very like unsexy and not cool. <laughs> <laughs> I also feel like steamy broccoli would be another good nickname. I'm on a roll, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so how long has it been since you've seen your boyfriend? I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, you're, you're really going down a, tr- a path here. <laughs> yeah. Do we need to, I know, is there, a, is it a 411? I'm not going to say it's, it's a 911. Okay, so we're good. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, do have to, I do have to ask a follow-up question, Cass. Uh, nuts in the brownies or no nuts? Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a nut person in the brownie, no. I'm with Cass on that one. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah, I like it if I'm out. Like, don't get me wrong, I'll eat a brownie however it comes to me. Mm-hmm. But if I'm making it and it's like something that I'm craving and there's like a there's like a need for it, um, mm-hmm. I would say yeah, I would omit the nuts. Good. But I do love a good cheese, like a cream cheese swirl. That is a nice addition. Ooh, I will accept that. Or like a pumpkin swirl. That's okay. Oh my! I, I find the nuts oh mess with the texture. Yeah, it just it gives it that crunch, whereas you're not what you're really expecting. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you want a fudgy brownie, yeah, it throws off the. That's not what you want. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's yeah. a textural thing. I agree. Exactly. exactly. All right. Next question, number four. What was your favorite cereal as a child? Frosted Mini Wheats. I 100 percent. Oh, yeah. Right away. <laughs> I loved them. So do I still do, but I have a wheat allergy now. So oh I no! Eat them. Oh. Um, it's it's a it's a cruel a cruel thing that has happened to me. But I loved them, and um, I went to a boarding school, and so we had oh. like a cafeteria. But you could you know access like anything in the cafeteria that you want. Um, and a, a thing that I learned that. Um, like an upperclassman taught me was because we had like a soft serve like machine Ooh. vanilla soft serve with Yum. them is really oh. good oh yeah that's frosted crazy. maybe it's in a bowl pour the soft serve on top vanilla soft serve specifically the chocolate's okay i feel like the vanilla just like it oh goes it's like gosh. vanilla and vanilla but it's different textures of vanilla and then it like seeps mm. in it's like the the that's cereal so milk bad. but like without the step and then you kind of dip it yeah. and eat it. But see, that would nice. not be cereal. That would be considered a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is what you want it to be. Yeah. You make yeah. it what you want it to be. Who says? Who says? Color outside the lines, you know, with what cereal could be. <laughs> I, I'm sort of the 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 food police. I sort yeah. of have categories. Are you the, the Puritan of food? Jeez. I'm the kind of. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules with time of day and utensils. It's very complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. But I like your idea, and I think it's good. I and think I, that's fantastic. That is. I'm going to have to try it. I know. I know. May have to make a note of that for mm-hmm. sure. All right. Um, Question number five. The uh, the theme of this season's show is, of course, are you on Team Waffle or on Team Pancake? Cass, tell <laughs> us. Team Pancake. <gasps> wow. Oh, you got some on your side, Kelly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 110, like not even a question, honestly. <gasps> not even a question. Why? Yeah. What, what is it about the pancake? Okay, there's. It's more about the waffle than the pancake. Oh, okay. 
Mm. I would say. However, um, one of the positive things about being gluten free is that I discovered the Pamela's brand of the mix of oh. pancakes. Ooh. And those are phenomenal. I've served them to people alongside regular wheat pancakes and they prefer these pancakes. And I think it's, again, we're going to go texture, but it's because they use a lot of like gelatinous rice flour in it. So it has like a mochi almost texture. And if Mm. you've ever had like the kind of like more Japanese, like Asian pancakes where they're very fluffy, but they're squishy, there's like a density to them, Mm -hmm. but like a lightness that is really nice. I think in my opinion, and those are delicious. But also, I, though I'm American, I went to school in 2008, nine area, era of mm-hmm. Toronto. And I feel like I was personally victimized by like the waffle craze that swept Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember this. It was like the starving artist. I don't know. It was just like, it was like that yeah. time in the zeitgeist where they were like, everything's better if you put a waffle with it. Like right. yeah, there were like, it was just, and, and there were so many of them that were dry and mm-hmm. like unpleasant to eat. And then it was just like a brunch gimmick. And I don't know. I just got like um, oversaturated and the the starving artist sorry starving artist if you're listening if you're great it. you were yeah. a great place R.I.P. but like <laughs> the little ones and then they put like every meat imagine like they just put like so much shit on it and it was like <laughs> always dry unfut I don't know I just feel very like I'm triggered right now thinking about it yeah. but <laughs> no, I'm, too. I'm remembering how much I spent at that place when oh. friends were like let's go to starving they had great coffee. They but, did. But the price of that meal for what you got was absurd. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, that, I, that's just clenched in anger. Wow. <laughs> that describes about like 80% of Toronto's brunch places. True. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, I'm just calling them out because I lived across the street from one, but it was uh-huh. just, yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to get a good waffle and then if I do have a waffle I want like more of a European waffle like a stroop waffle yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. it's like more almost wafer kind of territory mm. but like very yeah. soggy and saturated yeah yeah Oh, well, now that warms my heart and just proves how we work so well Kelly, together. I didn't I know you were a pancake it. person also yeah, stop I mean. it <laughs> This changed. This changed the trajectory of this whole season. Wow! <laughs> yeah, no one yeah. else so far on my team, so I am so happy. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah. Really? No. Why? Waffles are, waffles. Waffles. waffles are in the lead for sure. But what's your case for that? Well, I, I, for yeah. a lot of people, it's been the 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 like the pockets of flavor, yeah. you know, like because the the like you get a big stack of wa- pancakes, they get dense and sort of blend together and stuff. Well, you can't eat, yeah, you can't eat them that way. No, no, yeah. there's an art to eating pancakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah, no, it was about uh, yeah. A lot of people didn't like when you got to the middle and it was so dense. And for me, dense, dry, and then I have to use more maple syrup. And we all know how I feel about that. <laughs> so with the waffle, I can, you know, I can put butter and brown sugar and some blueberries. It seems more flavorful to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. But no, Kelly, this changes it. I mean, this is like breaking news. <laughs> this is like breaking CNN. News. This is like, exactly. you know. Just get Adam to come in and do some lighting or whatever. Um, <laughs> I know this is this is groundbreaking. I know, I know. Uh, so, for, so friends for listening, um, the breaking news is now uh, Team Pancake has another member. <laughs> I'm so stoked. <laughs> uh, but as of right now, for episode five, Waffle is still in the lead. We will see with our season finale uh, episode six <laughs> if that changes. But right now, Team Waffle, you're still winning. But yeah. I have a partner. I'm so party. happy for you, mm. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Uh, Cass, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Do you have any uh, any projects coming up that, uh, aside from our film, Janelle Niles Inconvenient, which folks can be, uh, can be watching somehow on the interwebs as of this episode being released? Um, but anything else coming up for you? What else are you working on? 
So I've been working in indigenous food and food sovereignty and restaurants for a while. So um, I am developing a food series that'll be um, hopefully, Mm. yeah, it's been a labor of love for a while. Um, So hopefully that will get some movement on it soon. And I've just been uh, doing a lot of writing and... You know, I work for different kind of magazines and things like that, covering the burgeoning indigenous food scene and just also how we think about um, indigenous food and just indigenous identity and things like that. I just want it to be exciting and fun and experimental. It doesn't always have to be historical. It doesn't always have to be stiff and like academic. Um, So that's, that's my, that's my goal. And in, um, sort of professional, but also personal. I'm going to try a garden. This I, I live on a farm and um, I have been getting and receiving all these wonderful indigenous seeds. So I'm going to do like a hybrid experimental garden and I'm very excited to see how that turns out. So oh, wow. cool. that's my, yeah. Yeah. Cool. We'll see. We'll see. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you for joining us and friends. Thank you for listening. This has been episode five of order up season three. Tune in next time for the big finale. Will pancakes uh, pull it out of nowhere? Probably not. But I'm <laughs> we'll see. Thanks, Gus. Today's kid of the week is 12 year old Molly. Molly, are you team pancake or team waffle? Well, here's the thing pancakes, no, waffles are factually better but sometimes i just need a pancake you're gonna have to explain why are they factually where are you getting this fact well there's more texture there's more place for syrup because on pancakes they just go everywhere um yeah but then pancakes are easier to make you can put stuff in them and not just on them and at camp they're really good thank you Today's Kid of the Week is eight-year-old Scarlett. Hi, Scarlett. Hi. This is the big question. Are you team pancake or team waffle? I am team pancake. And why are you team pancake? Because when you bake it, you can put lots of stuff in it. Like what kinds of stuff would you want to put in it? Uh, Chocolate chips, sprinkles, (laughs) anything you want to. That sounds amazing. Thank you, Scarlett. is hosted and produced by Matt Ardill, Mary Kennedy, Larry Kane, Kelly Zanekis, and original music is by Rebecca McDonald. 